on from my tablet. Sam, uh, it seems like Tom Brady has found his uh, rhythm with the uh, Buccaneers in recent weeks. Have you noticed that they, they figured something out that's really working for that offense, or, or do you think it's just a matter of uh, defensive line uh, disrupting them and, and kind of knock them off their game that you've been able to do in the first two games? I feel that Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay has done a phenomenal job all year of uh, being consistent on offense and defense. I mean, we, we always speak of their weapons, Mike Evans, Chris, LaShawn, Leonard, Gronk. I mean, they, they don't have a lack of weapons for anything on the offensive side of the ball, uh, you know, driven by Tom Brady. Um, and then on defense, you got the, the great linebacker pairing followed by a great D-line. Um, and the secondary stepped up this year. So it's complimentary football for them. And you can see, you know, how they've elevated their play this entire year. They're not the Tampa Bay Bucks uh, we f faced previously. These guys are, are serious contenders. It, is it fair to say, though, that, that since you're probably not going to disguise and confuse Tom Brady a lot, that, that speeding up his clock is probably the top priority? Yeah, um, he's been playing, you know, football since 1980-something. Um, he's seen every look that you can give. Uh, I saw uh, I saw a meme. I guess you know the uh, picture from Drew retweeted off of Tom, where they're you know facing off in the History Channel, and I thought that was I didn't even laugh. I thought was, I thought that was going to happen. I thought that was just a serious event. Next one, John Hey Dan, um, third time you got to be playing the same, but is, is it almost like they've had three different offenses? They had the first offense, the regular season opener, and then they added Antonio Brown the second one. I guess fully loaded with Antonio Brown, fully indoctrinated. Does it seem almost like a three different offense? Uh, it, I mean, they're high power. They've got a high octane offense. They've got receivers and depth and uh, running backs and depth and you know one of the top three, top two quarterbacks of all time. Um, yeah, I mean, what can you say about Tampa Bay and how they play football? We played them two times, and now we have to play them a third. This is you know, the most important game because it's the next game. This is something that we have to overcome to go where we want to go. That's one from Jeff Duncan. Hey, Graham, I wanted to ask you a non-game related question. Um, what's it like to play for a coach that wears Jordans on the sideline and does the gritty dance after games with players? I mean, it's got to be a unique experience. Better than some other players, but better. Uh, he does the gritty better than a lot of other players that have tried and failed. And, and does he, I would imagine there's a fine line there, though, right? Yes. Is anybody questioning, I wouldn't question his authority role, even though he's getting down and dirty with you guys in the locker room. Uh, what's, what's the question there? I mean, if there's well, a fine I mean, line, he, he that's his role. He, he does it well. Um, he is the coach that you know is going to be um, overly, uh, overly in tune with his offense. And at the same time, he's a, a head coach that has the, his hand in everything from offense to defense and wants to know everything about everything. I mean, um, there's a reason why he's so highly respected on this team, um, not because he's just given the name head coach, because of all the things that he's attuned for. Next one. Yeah. Jeff, did you have another one? Hey, Jeff. Um, Jeff, you know, Sean, he said earlier this week that playing in Tampa in the playoffs kind of seemed inevitable. Um, does it feel that way to you, just how well both of y'all uh, have played this season moving into the playoffs? Um, absolutely. I mean, once Tom Brady, you know, came up at the beginning of the year and blew on his conch shell and Gronkowski popped up and, you know, he assembled a dream team of every Merc out in the, out in the NFL game. I mean, um, you talk about what they were able to do. Everybody had them poised to, you know, have a, have a playoff run. The moment Tom Brady came on, you knew that uh, Tampa would be, you know, lifted up to a playoff caliber team. Um, and, you know, we just let our our work speak for us. We can't control what's happening outside of our realm. We can't control what's happening outside of our locker room. As the Saints, all we can control is ahead of us. And we have Tampa Bay again. Next one from James Later. What does it say about your team? Hey, Jane. Hey. How Dallas do? What? 
Nothing. Okay. Nothing. Your team and this culture, you guys have been able to get back to the playoffs three years in a row after some of these tough runs. Um, I mean, it's a testament to the players that we have in the locker room. Um, the ups and downs of any season, any season can take its toll. Um, especially how you how we've lost uh, the last three years. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we were able to have another chance. We were able to have this season uh, go all 16 games um, and come out with a 12-4 and record and, and put ourselves in the best position to be to have a playoff run. And, uh, you know, whether we're 6-10 and 10 or, or, you know, 12-4, and four, uh, as long as you make the playoffs, you have a chance. And that's all we have to do. We have to keep on fighting for each and every available snap to each and every available quarter uh, to finish each and every game stronger uh, than the last. If we keep on doing that, we'll end up where we want to be. I've got one more for you, Cam. Oh, sorry. You can I was going to say, I, I asked Coach what he planned to give Drew for his birthday on Friday. He said a good red snow plan. <laughs> what do you plan to give him? The guy's going to be 42 years old, Cam. Uh, is Metamucil a, a proper answer? No. Um, <laughs> uh, a heated blanket. Uh, no, you can't. You know, if anything, um, I don't know. If, I don't know if anybody can buy Drew Brees anything that he, you know, doesn't already have. Uh, so when you talk about, you know, what we're going to do, I'm just going to co-sign on the on the Reds. I'm going to give a great look on scout team if he if he asks for it. Next one from Lee Johnson. Hey Cam, uh, you're kind of speaking on Drew. I, I feel like uh, I've heard a lot of stories about his competitiveness. Um, maybe even outside of the football field. When you're thinking about Drew's competitiveness as player, human being, whatever, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Uh, Ricky Bobby. If you're not first, you're last. Um, at the end of the day, he's the ultimate competitor. Um, and you know that the, the first day you ever meet Drew in a, in a football environment, uh, you know, he's always been at the top of, uh, of, of his fierce competitive nature. I mean, you, you just catch that wind just going in, you know, my rookie year at a lockout year, and we're practicing over at Tulane. Um, you, you realize how competitive he was. Ten years later, you know, he's probably even more competitive than he was then. I mean, he wants to win everything from throw, throwing trash away, being the first there to do it, to whatever, you know, comp, quarterback competition they have during camp, to every rep, you know, they, any minuscule detail he wants to go over it a thousand times. Uh, whether he's taking the rep or not, he's going through all of his his motions, um, seeing things that, you know, I cannot clearly uh, <laughs> when he's going through his through, through his motions and how he'd attack a defense. I mean, these are something that you just come to expect this, the standard in which he is. So, competitive level always been high. Has he ever been you at Super Smash Brothers? <laughs> I'm unbeatable. And ping pong, ask him about it. Hey, uh, Cam, how's it going? Uh, Coach has said this morning that the defensive line um, had a big influence on the two victories earlier this year, especially the second one. I was, could you kind of summarize what you felt like you guys did really well? Yeah, I think that you expect them to respond and you know in the third meeting. Come on, you're asking you're asking me how I feel about the defensive line. I feel like it. In, what do you mean the first two games? All 17 games we played, all 160 plus games that I've been a part of, I always think the defensive line is the most impactful uh, component of a game. Um, without the defensive line, I mean, you know, we always say we are we are the spear, not not the tip of the sword, not, you know, uh, one of the weapons. No, no we, we are the entire weapon. And then everybody else can feed off of our energy level. Uh, and at the same time, you know, it's it's awesome to see, you know, you have linebackers that roll down hill, you have DBs that cover. Um, but I'm jaded. If you say what's the most important – part of any game, I'm going to say the physicality within the D-line and how we affect the quarterback. Do you, you expect them to um, have changed things up a bit or respond in a certain way? Did you notice anything studying the film? Or is there anything? Yeah, the way we attack practice, the way we attack this game is all that I'm focused on. Um, you know, the film that we break down and how they change up, they switch up their game plan, that's entirely on them. What we are capable of doing is controlling what we can't control, and that's how we uh, set the edge and, and play the interior uh, line. Tomorrow. Yeah, you were joking about uh, that meme, you know, thinking it might be real. Was it because you guys were on Nick last week that you thought maybe they might be putting this on? I'm just saying, you know, the first time it's ever been a Nick game, I thought, you know, maybe 
History Channel might have been next. All right. Well, uh, I just wanted to ask you, uh, kind of following up on what Brad said, just how important is uh, you know, getting pressure and kind of making that team one dimensional considering the running back they've got? Uh, very important. The, the most important. Um, so I guess following back on that last question, yeah, I do believe that defensive line, anytime they take the field, has the ability to take over a game. Um, whether that's, you know, containing a, a quarterback that's able to scramble or getting after Tom Brady, who has one of the fastest releases in the game and has uh, 17 different weapons on his offense. Um, you know, if we take away the run, then we, we eliminate something that, you know, we're able to control. Uh, if it comes out, the outcome comes out like any of the last two games, we'll be fine. Um, but we do know that they have, you know, one of the top greatest quarterbacks ever, and we have to be able to have a game plan that affects him. So we're going to focus every day, every play on what we can. Next one from Dr. Say. Hey, Cam, I guess you guys have gotten used to by now this whole season, but usually right now we'll be talking about playoffs, sold out, super zone, locking crowd, uh, defense feeding off of that. How have you as a defensive player this year? What's that been like for you, not having that behind you and playing football? I don't know how many people were in the game last game, but it got loud. Uh, we, we may not be at full capacity, but compared to the, you know, the last eight home games, this ninth one was rocking. So if we're, if we're able to have that many people or a little bit more, whatever the situation is, we can feed off of that. If not, we bring our own juice. You know, our cup runneth over when the fans are in. Last one from Asia. Yeah, going back to Drew and him uh, turning 42 later this week, have you thought about – Laura, you'll be at 42. Think you should be playing, uh, cutting up at the level that Drew is. Playing what? I don't know. Football. Croquet. Smash Bros. Ping pong. Yeah, yeah. 42, most definitely. Can't wait. Uh, 42, my dog Tank will be 16, 17, 16. Uh, maybe he might be 17. Graduate high school early. I'll be, uh, I'll be doing. You know, I'll have the privilege of watching him. Hopefully, play sports at the next level or not and just be supporting him being what he is. All right, we're all set.